I've been curious about these watercolors for quite a while now, but I was never able to find them in any of my local shops, so I just never bought any. That was until a few weeks ago when I saw this pack tucked away at the back of a little art shop in Stockholm, and I just had to get them. These poor babies have been sitting on my desk begging to be opened for over a month now, and I'm happy to say that today is finally the day. Kia ora everyone, this is Hey Johanna. So today I'm going to be testing out these Royal Talons Ecoline Liquid Watercolours. Yes, yes, I know I'm very late to the party on this. These came out and became popular years and years ago, but you know, I'm still really curious about them. And there's probably others out there who are still curious too. So if you have a problem with me being three years late to the trends, then you're probably not going to like me. Anyway, I'm going to open these up, swatch them out, do a couple of tests and things, and then we're going to paint something. So let's get into it. Okay, so Ecoline is a brand of liquid watercolor manufactured by the company Royal Talons. Royal Talons is a Dutch company who manufacture many other well-known art brands such as Van Gogh, Rembrandt and Amsterdam as well. As I said, it is a European company which may explain why I was unable to find these watercolors until I moved to Europe and uh, that also means that outside of Europe these may be a little bit more expensive than what I bought them for. I obviously bought mine in a pack, but you can find these little bottles as singles. The packs are good purely for this container tray thing that keeps all the watercolors together, and this way I don't have to worry too much about storage. I would definitely recommend keeping the trays if you do buy these in packs, otherwise you'll just have a bunch of loose bottles lying around. Okay, so the liquid watercolor comes in these 30ml bottles. There are 60 different colors available, so you do have quite the range to choose from. The bottles are made of clear glass, so you can see the colored liquid, but they also have a color code and swatch clearly on each label, which is really helpful, especially for the darker colors, which are nearly impossible to differentiate without that visual guide. Each bottle has a glass pipette worked into the cap. You can, I believe, buy these without the pipette cap, but just don't if you can avoid it. The pipette is so helpful for getting the liquid out of the bottle and into a mixing tray or straight onto your paper, but you can definitely just dip a brush or pen straight into the bottle if you prefer. You can also use the pipette as an application method if you really wanted to, you know, like do calligraphy with it or something, I don't know. It does work quite well actually, but I digress. To summarize, I love the pipette. The inside of the cap is made of rubber, which means that it seals very tight. This is definitely a good thing. You do not have to worry about these watercolors leaking everywhere, but it also means that it can be a little bit difficult to unscrew sometimes. That's not really a pro or a con, it's just an observation, though it does indicate to me some thought has been put into the design and quality of these bottles so let's just call it a pro. I usually don't like to focus too much on the packaging or the design of products I'm trying because in my mind it's what's inside that counts but it is important that the product kind of works. What good is the highest quality paints that ever existed if the applicator just f***ing sprays it all over the room? I think that these little glass pipette topped bottles though are really quite cute, really usable and easily identifiable. I like them a lot. Now onto the actual product. So it was extremely hard to find any information about these at all. Even on the Royal Talons website there's no actual useful information about the product. No light fastness rating, no ingredients lists, just nothing. But after playing around with them and also reading some other people's reviews, I was able to conclude that these are dye based colours. Traditionally, watercolour is pigment based. In fact, calling these watercolours at all is a little bit misleading. What these actually are are dye based, water soluble coloured inks. But, you know, potato, potato, right? But no, in all seriousness, this is actually really important to understand, especially if you are a watercolour painter, because these are going to work differently than normal pan or tube pigment watercolours. As I said, this is a dye based product and honestly much more similar to ink than watercolour, so I'm going to be calling it ink from now on. Yikes, okay, I'm really rambling on today. <laughs> Let's get into the testing. So I started swatching out each of these gorgeous colors and I was absolutely amazed by the vibrancy you could get from just a teeny tiny amount of ink. I did have some slight problems controlling them to begin with, but for the most part, they even themselves out and dry in this beautiful, flat, consistent color. The ink test was important for me because a lot of my work is lined first with black liners, so I had to test whether the colored inks would pick up or smear the black lines. I would have been really surprised if they had, as all the black inks I use are waterproof once dry, but it's always good to test it out just to be sure. I tested these over Unipin fineliners, Pigma Micron fineliners, and PBO Indian ink. Though considering the results, I'm sure that other brands of waterproof fineliners such as the Copic Multiliners, Stadler Fineliners, or the Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pens would all be fine to use in conjunction with the Ecoline inks as well. For the blending tests, I tested blending the inks together on a wet surface and a dry surface. This usually gives you a different result in regular watercolour painting, but as this is such a liquid medium, there's not too much difference between the two. I think I do prefer the dry blending, however, as it felt a 
little bit more controlled. I did have to work pretty fast though because dye-based inks dry very, very quickly as they soak into the fibers of the paper and it's nearly impossible to move the color once it's settled. However, this does not mean that these inks are waterproof. No, 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 no. These inks can be bone dry on the paper and the tiniest little bit of water will pick them up again. It makes it nearly impossible to layer them at all unless you're fine with blooming and muddy colors. And I have to be honest, knowing this makes me sort of wonder what kind of art you would even make out of these. For the next test, I tried blending two colors to create a gradient on paper. I'm not gonna say it doesn't work because you know, it does, but you're not gonna get a seamless gradient. I also had to work so fast so that the ink didn't absorb and stain the paper, creating an ugly hard line as well. I kind of managed to avoid that, but as I say, I was working so fast and the result is a little bit patchy. I think possibly the most annoying thing about these inks is the fact that they dry and stain the paper so quickly and yet they are reactivated just as easily. As you can see here, I lay down a few lines of color and then let them dry completely and then went over with water and more ink to try and lift the existing color out. The ink reactivates quickly and easily, smearing the water and muddying the additional color, but that existing line does not budge no matter how much I scrub the paper. You are 100% more likely to ruin your paper before you manage to lift that stain. Now being dye based, I thought that these inks might not be particularly light fast. That means I believe they will fade quickly if exposed to too much sunlight. So I swatched out the colors again and then put them in my window for a couple of days just to see if there was any difference. Unfortunately, I had like three days in a row of bad weather, but even so you can clearly see that the inks have lightened considerably in a short amount of time. I would therefore strongly recommend both scanning your finished artwork so you have a true color digital copy and keeping the original in a folder or just generally somewhere where it won't be exposed to too much light. I finished off with three more tests. <laughs> You've been a good audience, I promise this is the last few tests, and in my opinion, these were some of the most important. When I get a set of new art supplies, especially if it's a wet medium, what I like to do is create a mixed color grid. Basically, this grid is a way to become familiar with the colors that can be mixed from your range. It's excellent for color referencing and is often really surprising. I mixed one drop of each color together for consistency. So for example, the cyan row, I mixed one drop of cyan with one drop of magenta to create this blue. For the next color, I mixed one drop of cyan with one drop of vermilion to create this kind of mud brown. For the next color, I mixed one drop of cyan with one drop of light orange to get this green and so on and so forth. One of the many benefits of dye-based inks is that you can achieve true color mixing. The cyan, magenta, and yellow in these inks are so pure and so vibrant that mixing them together creates equally vibrant and clean secondaries. So here I'm just demonstrating the color range that you can achieve from just these three colors. I cannot stress this enough. If you're gonna buy these inks in singles, buy magenta, sky blue, parentheses, cyan, and lemon yellow, parentheses, primary, first. It's non-negotiable, you won't regret it. I mean, look at that color wheel. I made that using only three colors. That still never fails to amaze me. Okay, so finally, 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 I did some mixed media tests. From all I'd learned from the tests and how these inks function, I was starting to wonder whether these inks would be best used as a secondary media to a mixed media artwork. Of course, you can use these however you'd like, but personally, I was starting to get worried that I would struggle to create any kind of appealing art with a bright, transparent medium that can't be layered. <laughs> so I tested it first with my Winsor & Newton Gold ink. The gold ink over the Echoline ink worked. It didn't pick up the color or anything, but curiously, the Echoline ink kind of seemed to dull the gold sparkles once it was dry, so that was a little bit disappointing. The gold ink under the Echoline ink was just a disaster. They just bled into each other and yeah, it was, it was not good. <laughs> and mixed together, was a bit of a bust as well. I mean it kind of works but I don't think the effect looks very nice. You kind of need to use a lot of gold to make it worth it and even then you sort of lose the color of the ink. It's such a shame though because it looks so pretty in the mixing palette. Incidentally this is why you shouldn't put your brush straight into the ink container even if you think it's clean you're going to contaminate it. So next I tried with my alcohol markers and curiously the markers didn't pick up the color at all when applied over the ink and similarly the Echoline ink acted completely normally when layered over the markers so these two mediums can certainly be used interchangeably. Finally I tried mixing the Echoline inks with my normal pigment watercolors. Watercolor over the ink was a disaster. It picked up the ink underneath and made it all bleed. However, applying the Echoline ink over the watercolor worked quite well. And then finally, I tried mixing the watercolor into the Echoline ink to see what would happen. And basically, it works. I mean, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. You basically just get a slightly pigmented dye ink. 
it stains like an ink, it blends like an ink, so you basically get all the characteristics of the ink but with some colour added from the watercolour. I don't think it's a great way to use these but you know, you do you, whatever you like. So to summarise, these inks are dye based, super vibrant, easy to mix colours, fast drying, difficult to blend or create gradients on paper, they can't be layered, they're pretty staining, not very light fast, they're really fun to play with and can be used in mixed media artworks over waterproof mediums such as black inks, alcohol based markers and dry watercolours. <sighs> and now using all of this knowledge that I've gained, I'm going to draw something that uses these inks in a way that I think shows off their best qualities. Thank you so much for being patient. <laughs> So I was going to leave the time lapse of me drawing without a voiceover, partially because I've been talking a lot in this video already and partially because recording sound right now is a little difficult as I'm moving countries so my regular recording setup has all changed. However, after working with the Ecoline inks on an actual art piece, I did sort of become accustomed to them and how they worked and everything. I realised that I'd changed my mind about a few of the conclusions that I'd come to after testing the inks, so I thought I'd put in a little bit of voiceover to talk over those things that I learned while actually using this medium in a practical sense. So I decided that the kind of art that I am capable of that would show off this medium the best was going to be kind of a flat block colour illustration with bold black lines, sort of similar to comic art style. I also wanted to create the type of art that I would actually use these for instead of, you know, trying to paint in a brand new style I'd never tried before and then retiring them to the back of the shelf. Keeping that in mind, I sketched out a drawing in my normal style and then inked it with my black liners like I usually do, thinking that I would colour this piece in flat block colours with no layering and no blending. But the moment I put my brush on the page, I threw that idea out the window and began blending and mixing and painting similar to how I would with watercolours. And yo, it actually worked so good. I started with the fish and when they came out vibrant and flowy and beautiful, I realised that it takes actually using these in an artwork to really fully see how they work. Of course there were no nasty surprises as I had thoroughly tested the medium before starting, but actually using them in a real artwork changed my opinion on this medium completely. I really enjoyed testing these inks because they were so vibrant and so fun, but I probably fell in love with them when I started using them for real. I found that my initial conclusion that these couldn't be layered was not altogether true. You certainly can layer them a bit, you may lift some of the colour underneath, but I found if I was working in the same or a similar hue, then that didn't really matter. This meant that I was able to layer and create some depth and shadow in the fish, in the girl's face and in the leaves. I realised that these inks produce a fairly similar effect to what you might get from an alcohol based marker drawing. With markers the blending and laying is probably easier but with these inks you can achieve watercolour like effects. You can mix endless colours and you can achieve a really flat and consistent colour when filling large areas. I'm rambling on a bit again but I just wanted to say that while I was slightly sceptical during the testing phase, I came to realise that these are actually quite a diverse medium with loads of potential for an endless number of projects and artworks. So here is the finished artwork, I do love how it came out especially for a first go with these Ecoline liquid watercolours. I thoroughly enjoyed the process of painting this piece, the bright colours and easy to mix medium create such a joyful experience, it's safe to say that I have absolutely fallen in love with these. Realistically, I think that I might not use them say every day, but I can certainly see myself making plenty more art using these in the future, especially as an additional medium to add a pop of colour to some other pieces. In conclusion, I love these, I recommend getting these if you want to explore new mediums and I'm just really sorry that I wasn't able to jump on the Ecoline bandwagon sooner. Thank you all so 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 much for watching, kia ora everyone, have a wonderful evening and I will see you very soon. Bye!